We'll call a meeting to order. It's 5.30. Yep. And for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additions, deletions uh, to the agenda? No, sir. Are there any public comments uh, that are not on uh, this evening's agenda? If there are, this would be the time to make them. Seeing none, uh, at this point, I'd entertain a motion uh, to approve the minutes as submitted for the May 3rd meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the planning zoning meeting for May 3rd, 2021. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are adopted as presented. Now have a review and a discussion of the uh, conservation element and essentially we'll be carrying on from our workshop. Please, yes. Frank. Good afternoon. Um, so uh, as Mr. Stern mentioned, this is the review and discussion of the comprehensive development plans conservation element. Uh, we just went over um, the workshop that discussed the conservation element. At this time, staff uh, recommends that the Planning and Zoning Board review and discuss the comprehensive development plans conservation element and direct staff on how to proceed. Even if, if, if that is um, to adopt what we gave you, if there's comments, we could go over those comments um, similar to what we've done in the past, page by page. Um, or if you have any specifics, we can address those as well. Um, uh, Mr. Horneman, Kurt Thompson, and myself are here to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. I'll start with uh, any questions from the board. I'd like to make some suggestions for possible amendments. If you... Please do. Okay. If we could just start, Frank, I, I understand your statement before that the town government's sense is that Pelican Lake is the only surface water in the town, but it, it just comes to my mind, for example, I know on the grounds of FPL, they have bodies of water there, at least two, I think. Uh, one is maybe more of a marshy area, but uh, yeah. in any case, there's probably no reason to be restrictive and to only define it as only Pelican Lake, which it does in the current wording. So could we, for example, in objective one, state, for example, Pelican Lake so that we don't restrict ourselves to that in the event that there might be other bodies of water that would fall in this category now or in the future? Yeah, that's fine. But should we also add jurisdiction then to, to the yes, end of that? I, I definitely <clears throat> come under the jurisdiction of the town. Mm -hmm. That, that way, if they do, fine, and if they don't, okay. It, 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 I think it's in line with what the town is recommending. So noted. Okay, just a fussy point perhaps. Suppose I live near the environmentally sensitive lands, but I might be engaging in practices that might potentially affect the water in the environmentally sensitive lands by saying jurisdiction, are you excluding that possibility. There's a question if there would be an ordinance against you doing that. Well, in that case, if it's something like, you know um, that is affecting the environmental sensitive lands, then we actually contact Palm Beach County because that is their jurisdiction. But, so that's what the town would do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But is there a need to state only within the jurisdiction? Yeah, because otherwise, if, if we don't put jurisdiction, then you're telling me, as your example was, you know, FPL has bodies of water there, a lake, then that in a way is telling me that I can make them do something to the Pelican, uh, to, to that lake, right. which in this case is private property. And no, I, I don't have that jurisdiction. Right. I don't have that power. Okay. So th that's why jurisdiction is probably a good way to, or a good word to add at the end. E.g. Pelican Lake. Yes, got it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we, we're adding jurisdiction at the end as well. Correct.
So <clears throat> could we go one point by point as we go down the page? Because I have something on one one. You go ahead. One one that says the overall work program of Pelican Lake. How is that defined? I'm sorry, you're talking about uh, oh policy, one point one. Right. Yes, go ahead. Uh, that'll be determined by your MPDS program. So should we put that in there? Well, you have to measure certain things. Uh, phosphorus, nitrogen, chlorophyll A is part of that process and that directly relates to the water quality. <clears throat> so you're gonna get that type of information out of the MPS program. And we, we kind of addressed that in the policy that we added last year for 1.5. So right. addressing 1.5? Right. Okay. Um, excuse me, Frank, uh, I didn't understand that. That was my question too. That's a specific plan for Pelican Lake, the work plan? Yeah, it says the work, work program. program. Is that a specific document you're referring to? That's Sorry, part of the MPDS permit? Or is that generic? Is that why it's small W and small P? Because it's just a work program? Or is this a specific <coughs> document that you're, you're referring to? Each year, just to give you an example, <clears throat> as part of the MPDS program, the town has to prepare what's called a water quality monitoring assessment plan that gets attached to the annual report that is sent to DEO, DEP for review. Mm -hmm. What you're doing in that assessment is you're measuring phosphorus, chlorophyll A, and nitrogen levels that they may not necessarily be in your town. Where you measure it is at the monitoring stations, okay? <laughs> your system discharges south on this side of US-1, south through the golf course and eventually into the uh, northern section of Lake Worth Lagoon. There's a couple of monitoring stations as you head that way. Those measurements are made at those points. So if they're showing a declining trend, then the town is addressing the water quality issue in terms of those nutrients, okay? Okay. Same thing on the west side, of US-1 where you have a discharge point into the intercoastal waterway over by um, not Oak Harbor, the development to the north, Bay Colony. Bay Colony, yeah. So that's how you sort of understand the measures you at the best management practice measures that you as a town are taking under this program. Is it working or isn't it working? If they're showing increasing trends, then something's wrong. Something's happening that the town isn't dealing with. But your program, I know, has been showing declining trends. Tony should be here to verify that, but I know he would. Can I, can I ask a very generic question? <clears throat> Maybe it's a silly one, so I apologize in advance. But are there different rules and regulations with regards to natural, natural lakes and then storm retention or retention ponds? Well, a detention pond is a pond that will, when it reaches a certain level, discharges and relieves itself. In your instance, it's the weir structure at the south end of the lake. A retention pond you'll oftentimes see on golf courses where there's no discharge point. It's designed to hold so much capacity and then it eventually recedes. But if you're discharging, then you have a way of measuring the quality that's coming out of your system. It may be down, down river, so to speak, from your town, but you can measure it because your discharge is passing those points. And we're, you say we're improving. Yes, well, you're showing declining trends in those. The three things we're measuring right now are nitrogen, phosphorus, and chlorophyll A, the nutrients. Those are the main things. Typically, what affects those things are things like septic tanks, 
That's why there's this big move to convert septic tanks to closed systems. And um, that's a whole other program, but sure. that's the rationale behind it. So could I ask this work program is something that's a Juno Beach work program? Is that your point for that? Uh, well, it, it really is the MPDS, but on top of that, we can create different programs if you want to, you know, well, we're, we're using the word, so um, it could be the Pelican Lake, nah, it's, that's a workshop, that's not a program. Um, it, it would be somewhere where you actually check the, the water quality, and I guess we're doing that. Well, didn't you, just as an, let's use this as an example. Didn't you, through this uh, committee structure, don't you have a program like, for example, introducing the bubbler systems that are out in the lake? Don't you have like six bubbler things out there? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, and you're also decreasing the types of uh, things that can be discharged into the lakes. You're, you've adopted, or you're getting ready to adopt. Uh, it's called the Florida Friendly Landscape Ordinance, but what it, it's generically referred to as the fertilizer ordinance. It's, it's to cut down on the, on the amount of fertilizers being used and getting discharged into Actually, uh, surface waters. So there's a, there's a whole number of best <clears throat> management practices that, that uh, fall into this. So the, the town, I think, has, the, I was under the impression, maybe I'm wrong here, Frank, but I thought you had a pro, an actual town program where you're dealing with the Pelican Lake specifically. We, we have the Pelican Lake workshop, and we, we, are, we do have an, um, a consultant, and they're talking about, um, you know, the, the water quality. We're working with them. We're talking about doing littoral shelves. Um, anything that has to do with draining on into the lake, um, you know, the environmental group actually discusses that. Um, we take those comments um, to <laughs> to Palm Beach County. So if, I mean, that's a program with, within itself. And as you mentioned, you know, we do have that, um, the fertilizer ordinance that just got approved. Uh, we do have the Florida friendly um, ordinance that also got approved for landscaping um, and all of those impact the town and the lake itself. So I think they're using that term program sort of generically. But it's, it's so there's more than one program or there, there's not a program. There's multiple programs. There's no. Yeah, not, not that I'm aware that there isn't one program for Pelican Lake. Maybe there'd be a better way to say that. Since there is no work program. I picture a chain gang on a. Uh, side of the road picking up trash <laughs> right. is a work program <laughs> right like you know something that's identified that's written down it's got a uh, I, I guess this is more of a generic um, the, the, the various uh, I don't know work um, why don't you just take the uh, word program out just say continually pursue efforts to improve water quality in Pelican Lake by. Am I looking at the? I'm look. Are you looking at objective one or, one point one. or policy one one? One point one one policy. Yeah, that. Oh, I see. With the overall work. Now, instead of program, you could say something like work effort or. Work efforts. Um, yeah. How would that work? I'm, I'm good with that. Um, management of? I like that. Management of. The overall management of. <clears throat> We'll also get with Tony after this and, and we'll run that by him and then we can make an, uh, an update. And exactly what do you mean by the word cleanup of the lake? Is that where you go around and pull trees out or? Well, this is where history comes into play. Way back when, before this facility was here, 
the town expended uh, money to demuck the lake and to get rid of all the cattails and uh, try to get rid of the duck problem <laughs> at that time. That was the cleanup program at the time that was referred to. But anything that works towards in cleaning up the surface waters or the water quality, again, it's kind of a generic term, I guess, but this was originally aimed at that particular program back then. I have a question about the dredging. Why is it dredging taken out? I'm not sure you want to disturb the soil. That, that was a comment by Erm. Um, I just got to look to see what they, the reason behind it. I think there's been discussion that because there are levels of undesirable copper on the lake bottom, for example, that unnecessarily stirring up the lake bottom yeah. would not be good for the lakes. Herm said water. dredging may not cause more harm to the water quality. Yeah, Herm so said even it dredging may right. cause, right, you just said it, okay. <laughs> so, so I guess at one time, like Jack said, they did do dredging to improve the water quality? Yeah, we, de we demucked and got rid of all the cattails that were growing in there by dredging well right. i guess you call it dredging yeah they had to get it out of there you know it was a big pile right where we're sitting and um, then they added the um, aeration fountain down at the south end of the lake at that time and then over the years you've done other things to uh maintain that So the, the idea of taking it out is there's no plans to do any more dredging. So that's not a cleanup method anymore. That's why it's out. No, not to put us in a box and say that we have to do dredging, but if, I mean, that could be the definition like doing cleanup. Mm. Right. Yeah. But that's why we have an uh, environmental consultant that will guide us the right direction. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to understand that. Should we put the... Um... NPPS as part of the work program in parentheses? Well, we address that throughout this element. So I think that would, okay. we were trying to be a little site specific there because that was a particular issue. You know, the lake is your focal point in town, really. Um, so we just separated that out as a specific item. I'd like to make a suggestion for policy 1.3, um, similar to what we just decided for objective one, where we don't want to restrict ourselves to saying only Pelican Lake. Could we insert the words to include surface water bodies, including Pelican Lake? So for example, the sentence would say, future development around surface water bodies, including Pelican Lake. Of which the town has jurisdiction. Well, I don't think you need to keep repeating that, but just in terms of. No, I, I think maybe you want to. Okay, perhaps. So there'd be no, no mistake that, that that's now an exclusion. Yep. Similarly, the same. Better exactly. be safe than sorry. Okay. And then exactly the same thing for policy 1.4. Yep. Um, in this one, actually, I, I don't believe that's needed because if it's future development, um, whether it's private or not, it still goes through the site plan process and it gets reviewed. So um, if you want to add, you know, uh, where, where would this water. occur? So FPL, I mean, let's keep picking on them. Let's say that they want to build another building, which they cannot, but you know, they wanted to do one around the lake, you know, future development, the building of building F, you know, should be limited to uses of land that do not degrade water quality below acceptable water quality standards. It is private sector, I understand that, but we can still, uh, try to address it in the site plan review process. Well, we would have jurisdiction over that. No. In the site plan review process, yes, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, can, can you repeat that? Uh, future development around surface waters? S surface water bodies, including water bodies. Pelican Lake. So I would say under the town's jurisdiction, though. Mm -hmm. Still say that. Right. 
and ditto for 1.4. Going back to 1.2, what are wetland functions? Whatever the state says they are, <laughs> those are changing all the time. So as defined by the state? Yes. Should we put that in there? That, that comply with state mandates? Maybe there'd be county mandates too? Mm -hmm. State and county well, mandates. Leave it out. <laughs> well, they have, to, they have to do that. They have to do it anyway, so I uh, guess we can leave it alone. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna show up in your site plan review process. I'd like to jump to objective two, unless people have other things for number one. So. Okay. Objective two of the, in the statement itself, could we include groundwater there that we want to preserve the quality and supply of groundwater and potable water? Groundwater would include making sure the Pelican Lake has a good, clean water quality, for example. Well, groundwater is addressed in the natural ground or groundwater aquifer recharge sub element of the infrastructure. It's important to keep surface and groundwaters, in my opinion, separated because they're governed by different sets of rules and regulations and jurisdictions. Hmm. Groundwater, for example, Seacoast is getting its consumptive use permit from the Water Management District. They tell you how much of the aquifer they can use. That's different than dealing with your surface surface waters and in their permit they have to meet certain quality and quantity uh, parameters of that permit jack in order to preserve your potable water which is i guess in effect coming from the aquifer doesn't that mean your groundwaters have to be kept healthy and doesn't that therefore fit in with this well what is groundwater? Groundwater is your aquifer. One and the same then. Well, not how you have to address them, it isn't. That's different. If you were to go back to the infrastructure element and look at the natural groundwater aquifer recharge, you would see how that is dealt with. And also as part of the 10 year water supply, water facility supply deal, because that and the consumptive use permit that Seacoast and Town of Jupiter gets is controlled, the quantities are controlled and identified in that permit. What was Pelican Lake groundwater? Surface waters. It's surface waters. Yes, ground. that's correct. So groundwater is, is the aquifer. Now you want your groundwater supplies clean for potable and consumptive water use purposes. That's why you want the groundwater supply protected. Now, groundwater supplies can be used for other things like gray water for irrigating golf courses and things like that. But that has a direct relationship to the potable water supply. I think the way it reads right now to protect and conserve potable water supply and quantity or quality and supply already includes groundwater. The supply of potable water is groundwater. Correct. So it would be redundant to add and groundwater. In 2.2, we talk about the county's wattage Water shortage, shortage plan in capital letters, is that still in existence? Yes. And that's actually the what we use to, to do our irrigation ordinance that we just passed as well. Yes. Is that the name of it? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes.
question maybe for for Jack regarding other towns. I, is it, I think, is it the case that um, some of our surrounding towns have requirements that reduce demand for water by requiring energy efficient shower heads, washing machines that are energy store and things like that? And should we therefore also put something in here to that effect? We do have that in the uh, infrastructure element. Again, we specifically talk about energy saving devices, low volume fixtures. That's energy saving. This would be water saving though. Water saving. No, that's what I'm talking about. Potable water sub element of the infrastructure element. We address that. Mentioned something about the water shortage plan, just as an aside. Just I don't know how many people realize this, but at, the, the water shortage plan says that the county can declare a stage four water emergency, which is pretty severe, and order the utilities to drop the water pressure in the pipelines as far as they possibly can. And the health department says that's 20 pounds per square inch because less than that will allow bacteria to get into the water lines. So Seacoast and anybody else under a stage four, which we've never had that I know of, would have to drop the level in the water tower to lower that pressure. Once that happens, water will, in certain areas, will not get to a third floor of a structure. It would be hardly anything trickling out, certainly not the fourth floor. So Seacoast mandates as part of their plan review process, booster pumps put into three story structures and above. I, I, that's something that the, as long as I've been at Seacoast, the building departments have not been enforcing the, the, the requirement for, for, a, for a booster pump because it's not in the building code. And, and Seacoast has really no jurisdiction over building code issues. We have jurisdiction, they have jurisdiction over reviewing plans. So the town may want to consider looking at that for um, higher, uh, you know, three, three or and, and above uh, any structures that are three stories and above, they have a booster pump in case there's a water shortage emergency that people would still have drinking water. So um, if, I, I got a question about that. Um, so there's a new project, Seacoast um, jurisdiction. The town requires Seacoast to review the plans before we approve it. If you write that as a condition of approval, you're saying that the, the town, would, or maybe this is for land, <laughs> um, we wouldn't be able to enforce that? No, no, no? I'm saying Seacoast could make it a, a condition, write it on the plans or whatever. Mm -hmm. But as far as the building permit, the town may want to check the, mm -hmm. and, and, and require that as well. Okay, it, what, um, the way we do our, our plans here is, is you know, um, Seacoast, Jupiter Water, Loxachi River District, um, they're part of the town. So their conditions of approval become our conditions of approval. Um, and the, actually our stamp, when we stamp something, it actually says as noted per comment X, Y, and C. So it, it does become our condition of approval if um, other, and other entities um, state it. Yes. Okay. So, thank you for that. What, what can you do though, John, just out of curiosity, <clears throat> Like these uh, condos along the ocean here. They all got pumps already. They do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was my question. But a lot of times a three-story townhouse won't, for example. And the day will come if there's a water shortage that people say, I, I can't flush the toilet. I'm like, mm -hmm. what's wrong with the water? And say, well, you know, you, don't, you should have put a pump in 40 years ago. Whatever. <laughs> That's all. It's, no, it's good to know, especially with proposed projects coming into town that are over three stories. Thank you. Do we have any additional comments on that page? Oh, no, 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 not on that page. No. All right, page number two, well, 46, I guess. Actually, I actually had a question on, so it's objective four, where they talk about the Florida friendly landscaping regulation. Is that something that we enforce here? Yes, we actually just adopted that um, either late last year or early this year when we um, looked at our landscape requirement. 
and actually when we talked about um 50% uh, of the native vegetation so yes it was this year this year yeah. thank you I'm, I'm i'm all over the place yes so we actually adopted that this year if you want to learn a little more about that where would you find that no, I, I think do we have that in the in the website still i, I believe we have it on the town's website yeah. but um in there in, in the code itself it actually gives you the location where you can right. where it's you can go get the it university of florida it's the yeah university of florida. So we do have the name for it and all it is, is if you go to munich code you can just click on it if not you, you're gonna have to type it out for residential also i'm sorry is that for residential yes yeah yes so my my question is on three five does the town want to promote electric vehicles and the use of parking spaces for charging stations when we have difficulty with parking as it is that's why we put it there <laughs> so we we did discuss this one um you know it's we discussed it um there was one you know i think the the, the word that was um the word that um was shown and this is actually from from Ms. diana davis's um um, comment. Um, I, I got to look it up, but the, it wasn't the same wording. So we added the promote part of it because again, it's not, we, we can't tell you to do it, you know, although we do have some, some uh, places here that already have it, uh, but we can promote it and we can do that through the building, uh, through the site plan process. Rather than saying electric vehicles, shouldn't it be um, uh, the use of efficient, energy efficient vehicles? Uh, because uh, it might be fuel cells in the future and not not electric, and this should be left up to the people running the town. And now the technology is changing, so you right. put in a charging station, it might not be working the same way in ten years. But and now, now I'll tell you. Well, the town told me to put it in. It's, it's not a report. We promoted it. <laughs> well, it's just say energy efficient, and, and that could include electric vehicles and Let's and. The pertinence is there too for, for support it, of a, any energy efficient. But Michael, it's about promoting the, charge, the installation of charging stations. I know, and and so I would specifically uh, be be less uh, specific and simply say promote uh, energy, the use of a, uh, energy efficient vehicles, and. Uh, required appurtenances for support thereof or something like that, leaving the town manager uh, the ability to decide what fits at the appropriate time. Or perhaps put in an EG, EG such as by encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Efficient uh, charging stations, mm -hmm. EG would be helpful there. Yep. Okay. Frank, is that okay? Uh, could, could you say that one more time? Michael saying, promote the use of energy efficient vehicles, e.g. by encouraging the creation of electric vehicle charging stations, but not restricting it to that. We don't want to be running the town from this committee. Right, right. I mean, we want That's to what's promote, right. not require. I, I just feel that we shouldn't even encourage charging stations because you're using parking right, we're spaces. Taking it out. Pardon? We would take it out. I simply, would take it out. No, no, no. I think that that's agreed at this point. That's what I'm suggesting anyway. And I think Jim goes along with it. We're promoting energy efficient, right? And and uh, whatever support appurtenances to support energy. And that could be charging stations or not if we don't. It's just an EG. Yeah. It's not a requirement. Mm -hmm. Right. I wouldn't even put the EG part. Well, suppose the town's building a new town center or there's a all right, suppose the corner of Donald Ross US one is going to be developed and the so I, I come with my gas car and I can't park in that space because it's a charging station. They don't say you can't park there. Well, that, that's already the yeah. case in some of the parking garages downtown. Sure. They're reserved for electric right. electric vehicles. But if they wanted to reserve a couple of spots for recharging. We have one we have one uh condominium who is trying to reduce the number of disabled spots because they essentially do not have it's a townhouse community they don't have disabled people living there really and if you do come to visit you can park in there you know 
driveway. But that's completely different. That falls right. under that's the fair housing But here we are trying to take <laughs> right. some parking spaces away for charging I'm stations. Just thinking, Paul, like from what I was listening to, technology might not be the same. Yeah, yeah just say uh, uh, promote or encourage uh, the use of energy efficient vehicles. Period. And then that can go a long way into the future. It might be electric. Um, uh, uh, if then that requires charging stations at some point, but, you know, it's something that could be addressed at that time. By 2025, I heard yesterday that there won't be any European automobile manufacturer who makes an internal combustion vehicle. And that's Toyota has a technology your... for fuel cells coming out now, which uh, may, may be a leap over electric, mainly because the fuel cell makes electricity. But at that point, it won't. And it may require a charging station in addition to. Yeah. So let's not tie our hands. Let's just leave it flexible enough that, that... We, we can do that. OK, so just encourage the use of energy efficient vehicles. That's doable, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think we, 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 we put electric vehicles because I believe that's what the EPA yeah, uh, website actually called them. But that doesn't mean that we can do the same thing for the EPA hybrid. Is EPA is one hundred percent correct. All the time. Yeah, I, I know, you know, but that we they're, could be ahead of them. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't promote, like as you mentioned, energy efficient, period. such as vehicle, um, hybrid vehicles. You know, that are just period. Yeah, whatever that happens to be. Yeah, because th there's some places that have got a good green point. parking spaces. You know, for green vehicles, they have a preference. They put them up in the front. Yeah, so that's promoting it. Mm -hmm. they, they can even drive in the rush hour lanes. <laughs> they can, apparently, yes. With one passenger in it. That's correct. So, M Michael, what's your suggestion? Just to leave it as promote the use of electric or energy no, efficient just vehicles? just energy efficient vehicles. Promote energy efficient vehicles. Yes, encourage or promote whatever you want to want to use. Or both during the site plan review process, or not, Michael? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. Probably, my, when I get home, my lights will go out now. <laughs> <laughs> We can jump to section four. I have something. Sir. Sure. Okay. 4.7. Uh, 4.7 is just worded in a way that could be construed as being restrictive, that it only protects plants that are both endangered and threatened and of special concern. So could we change the words and protect endangered or threatened or protect plants that are endangered or threatened or of special concern? I got I gotta jungle juggle through these um to see why we put it that way. Uh, five point two four. That yeah. was Erm's Erm's comment. No, that was um or public comment. That was a public comment. Policy five point two point four. Looking at I have one on four point five also. <clears throat> Protect in danger and or and species. Yeah, so see, th this is one of those comments that we actually took out of um, the public comments that we received. We're looking at uh, Ms. Diana Davis's uh, policy 5.2.4. And, you know, again, we, we, we like the policy. Um, we believe that this is already addressing that, but we wanted to take that species of special concern and maybe we just put it in the wrong place because it, it, it might not make uh, too much sense. Um, but our whole goal there was, was to include species of special concern, uh, protect in danger and trend plans. I'm not taking that out, Frank. I'm just, hmm. I'm just suggesting it's a protect plants that are endangered or threatened or species of special concern. I, I like you that. You only have to meet one right. of the criteria. You don't have yeah, to meet the that's how it was in the proposals. Endangered, threatened, or of special concern. Easy enough. Yes, sir.
You had something with 4.5, Paul. Yes, uh, in, in that one you have Atlantic Beach. I think before we said uh, Atlantic Ocean Beach with a small b. Which, where are you at? 4.5. And we also refer to Atlantic Beach properties in 4.9 and that's as a small b, mm -hmm. neither one has the word ocean. I think you should add the word ocean, make it a small b. Well, no. <laughs> the beach area is the area down to the mean high water that you have some say about. You don't have anything to say about what's going on in the ocean. Right, but it's so the if same. We add ocean. Well, it's a, I was just trying to define the, the beach. I didn't yeah. know Atlantic. Beach. Well, I was going to say something else. The map, the town's map, used to have a sliver that was called the Atlanta Beach, Atlanta Beach area or something, didn't it? Could be Ocean Beach. Yeah, I mean, we we still have that. I don't know what, still have what it? it's labeled. Do yeah. I think that's why that language is used. That's what I'm saying. Oh, to be consistent with yeah, the map. Yeah, to be consistent with the map. We'll double check that, but I, yeah, I again, think that's the mean... reason that was used. <clears throat> There's an, actually an error. Well, is at one point it, it was changed to that and then it came back. In the ERM document, it was changed to that. Oh, 4.5. Oh, that, that was a recommendation by ERM. Right. Right, yes. I was trying to go back towards that. Right, and I think what Mr. Um, I think what we're trying to say is that, you know, just to be consistent with the map, we just didn't take, we, we, we didn't add the word ocean in there, but we can look at it if, if it. I guess everybody probably knows it's the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that's a problem to add ocean, Jack, do you? Do you have a problem with adding the word ocean in there to make it a lower B? That's the way Arm did it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Correct. There's an area north that is I got it. Is that a small B or a capital? B? Well, it's, it doesn't have it on here. It's on the plan. But... Should be small, right? Okay. It, it's I would say fine small. changing it to yeah, small. I would B. just change it to Atlantic. Be consistent yes. with four nine. Yeah. That, that's fine. That's fine. Getting mired here. Jump to number five, objective five. Okay, under objective five, if we look at 5.3, I think it's just an accident that it's here. Objective five is all about protecting sea turtles, whereas 5.3 is about stocking Pelican Lake with fish. Mm -hmm. I think this was perhaps meant to be in or objective number one, where we talk about the quality of Pelican Lake. So. What do you recommend? I think I think it needs to be moved to objective one. This is about Pelican Lake water uh, quality. Five point three. Five point three. Um, if, if we could move that to, well, I guess somewhere in object in objective one. Correct. Right. Yep. So it would be five point one something. Uh, as this is talking about uh, Pelican Lake. Okay. There's nothing to do with sea turtles. Right. It's FWCC. Wildlife Conservation Commission. I got it. I got it.
Okay, so we'll make the correction on the typo and then put it um, in policy one. Right. And another I mean, objective one. Another question, Frank. It, it, it orders you to utilize the services of the Fish and Wildlife Commission and federal agencies. Suppose there was a private supplier of fish. Would this, this would seem to restrict you from ever using a private supplier if you wanted to. Let's see that. Yeah. So it could say, for example, utilize the services of FWCC, comma, federal wildlife agencies, comma, and other appropriate suppliers. Approved. That effect. Five point three. The same one, uh, Kurt. Three. Five point three would be an approved supplier, you know, which would be in line with uh, Fish and Wildlife. And you don't even have to put that in if you don't need to. You know, I, I just think you just don't want to restrict yourself to only no. those two. G great comment. Yep. We'll we'll add it in there. Still five point three. Yeah. Well, I think you assume that Fish and Wildlife won't introduce any uh, uh, harmful species. Sure. But. Uh, a private supplier, you may not be able to assume that. And so- Frank would do his due diligence, I'm sure. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Frank would <laughs> sell us bad fish. <laughs> well, he won't go to a supplier that's gonna put lionfish in or something. Frank, a question about objective six, when, when we- define which land use activities are compatible with the environmental characteristics. Um, is there any kind of documents that would explain what the criteria might be, since we're not st stating criteria here? I guess I see that Just later on in the same floor. document, if you go to 6.3, for example, you're talking about regulations. Well, whose regulations? And six five. Um, things like that. Are there? Do we have some reference documents for, for these kinds of policies? So objective objective six, for example, you know, um, land development. That's obviously chapter thirty four, and we do have a section that talks about environmental sensitive lands and what can be do done there. We also have a section that talks about public recreation and private recreation and what can be done there. Um, so that's the land development, you know, um, part of it, okay. um, and, and the activities that can be done there. Those are just permitted uses, um, special exception uses, and preferred uses. So you um, think for each of these policies, there'd be a section in the code that would yeah, amplify? Yeah, what, what, was, what was the next one that you had? No question? Uh, six, three, six, five, six, six. It's just... Just wondering what the criteria would be for these things. To, to answer your question, yes, the local thing would be some of the codes that Frank just mentioned, which might be separate from zoning or might be part of it. Or in the site plan review process, there's often listings of things that we have to look at when a site plan comes in front of the town or references mm -hmm. to. Policy 6.7, we talk about the, the use of renewable energy, such as solar sources of electrical power. If the thrust of 6.7 is, is really to prevent air pollution, which like, I guess is really what my question is, if the thrust is about air pollution, should this be in objective three instead where you aim to reduce fossil fuel air emissions? as opposed to land development, which is what objective six is about. Is this more about air quality than land use? In objective three mm -hmm. is where you have the... I, I gotta check my notes because there's a reason why we went there. Right by uh, energy efficient vehicles.
you, you, you got to speak into the mic, Kurt. Kurt, please get to the microphone. You got to speak into the mic. <laughs> The other two parts. It was on policy 3.9. Yeah. Is, am I right, Frank, that this is meant to be basically dealing with air quality issues that you don't want to pollute the air? No? Right. Yeah, so, so we got this from policy 3.9 from Ms. Diana Davis, um, which that read, adopt code provisions and ordinances that encourage alternative solar and wind sources of electrical power, whether distributed by on-site generation or from renewable energy providers such as FPL, including the requirement of the town to engage in a pilot project funded by the Department of Energy grants to install a solar energy project. So the way that the town saw this was, was more for um, the solar panels that we see in the houses. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why we, we said encourage the use of renewable energy, um, which again goes back to land development, which is more, you know, do not prohibit the installation of, of, of solar panels, even if it doesn't meet the architectural standards for that sewing district. Isn't there a, a law already in Florida that you can't do that? Right, and that's the Florida Solar Rights Act. So we follow that. Right, right. So because we're basically then, encouraging that. Right, because you know we, we have some older develop, uh, <laughs> developments here that you know in their HOA documents, which haven't been updated, it says you cannot put anything on the roof. So this right here, we would actually quote that act the Floor Solar Act and say, no, you can't do that. But, but yeah, I, I like the policy, Frank. It's just a question, does it belong here or does it belong with objective three? Well, we saw it as land development because you know it has to do with the Florida Building Code and it has to do with architectural standards. Okay. Um, yes. I think that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, objective seven, the town shall amend its code of ordinances to provide future protection of fisheries, et cetera. Why don't we just do that? And then it's sort of not, it's certainly not an objective as the way it's written. Why do we say we want to make, you know, in other words, start it with just say to provide for the future? Why not have that already in the code of ordinances? Why are we telling ourselves to yeah, make actually, the code? Do you want to strike the words? I'm, I'm thinking code? of where. <laughs> yeah, just start it, capital T, two. In other words, to provide for well, the, the town shall future provide. protection. The town shall provide. Or the town shall provide. Why don't we just do it and then. Right, right. So we take out amend its code of ordinances two. That well, sure. strike those words. Yes. Okay. So it reads the town shall provide for the future protection. Well, that, yeah. The response to that is, or the follow up to that is to amend your code. Right. To provide those With things. Else in stock here. Right. <laughs> I, I believe we actually. The code. We're just recommending that the council recommend the code. Right. Yes. Yes. But um, I think we started working on that because we do have something for native vegetation. You know, we, we just did that um, earlier this year. And then we also have something for wildlife. Um, I cannot I cannot remember if we have anything for fisheries or marine habitats. But we do have you know, we obviously do go through the process of, of um, the district and the Army Corps of Engineer, anything that has to do with water for that. Um, the reason the reason all those areas were listed was it was language from the law, from the law. Now, whether we have fisheries, marine habitats, marine habitats we do have, but we really don't have any jurisdiction. But if that were ever to occur, well, I guess if you had fish in the pond, in the lake or something, but... Um, 
Or even uh, ocean pollution. Excuse me? Even ocean pollution. Yeah. yeah. Harm the fish. This is actually a good one where we can take a look at it and see where it is in the code and yeah. then come back. The point is we wanted to get it in the code. Right. In the codes. So. But the town just simply provide for. You don't have to amend your code, you just provide for. I just jump ahead to the end then if there's sure. the ecology group had suggested that we have a section dealing with solid waste and I, I know earlier this afternoon you talked a little bit about that Jack could you just reiterate the reason for not including the solid waste section here for example they, they had suggested that we have an objective nine which would be to reduce the volume of solid waste by adopting policies which encourage reuse recycling and pollution prevention. Okay. Um, in my notes, I had C policy 2.1, solid waste sub-element of the infrastructure element. And again, hazmat provided by Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, also addressed in the MPDS program. The whole, the whole ecology concept of reduce, reuse, recycle, is that completely covered, you think, by those policies? Well, we'd have to go back to the infrastructure element, but yeah, I specifically cited 2-1, policy 2-1. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, for example, in waste, uh, 4.1, um, hazardous and toxic substance. We already have a code section 12-1 that talks about that, which is the disposal of toxic and hazardous sub substances. Frank, I'm, I'm getting more into reduce, reuse, recycle, not toxic at all. Do you have a specific? Um... No, just it's a broad concept. Okay. That do we want to encourage recycling policies in the town, um, reducing oh. the overall quantity of waste, whether or not it's harmful or not? You read some paper as well. But what's it, the it, conservation? It, it, it actually, in my notes, I, I have that section 22-19, uh, which is the collection and recycling section, already has an adoption of mandatory solid waste collection and recycling. And that's in our code right now, 22-19. Are we suggesting that we reduce the quantities or is it simply that you have policies concerning them without stating that there's a, a benefit to actual reduction and recycling? Um, I, I don't have the code sections in, in front of me. No, I, I just have it labeled as 22-19 and the title of it. Maybe we could just ask you, would you just consider looking at those other policies and seeing whether you, you, you believe right now we're encouraging reduction of waste in general, whether it's harmful or not, and recycling of waste? Are we doing what we can to mm -hmm. encourage? I'm just thinking, okay. just to give you an example, for example, the town is going to at some point come up with a new contract with waste management and look mm -hmm. for competitive bids. Would the town council want to consider which one is better at promoting recycling? It's better, maybe that's a consideration apart from price. That's the kind of thing that would be a, a benefit. It, to isn't town. that in part controlled by the county though? I don't know. As that's to what they can do, I think, I think it is. Could be, that's what I'm just asking. I, I think they have to meet minimum county standards and I, I'm not sure that there's anything above that. Should we have something above that mm -hmm. would be, well, it's not a man, we're not mandating something here. It's a goal. It's, it's, well, it's my, my question would be if I, you know, after reading through this, I don't believe there's a reduction of waste section of it. Is it the consensus of the board from you add language to that? Would we like to encourage people not to create unnecessary waste? That's my question. Yes. I, I need a consensus, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> if I'm going to create something that the I board is recommending. In general, you might do it, Paul, but. Is it our town policy to do that? Well, it's the county policy, yeah. although I see some of my neighbors don't recycle. Exactly. Right. And occasionally I'm a little lazy and take a little piece of cardboard and don't run out and put it in my blue or yellow bin. I, well, I've heard a lot of those recycled items just end up in general garbage anyway. They don't. Just out of our control, totally. take them anymore. 
actually, I think Solid Waste Authority does a pretty good job of trying to recycle as much as possible, but it has to get there in the first place. You have to encourage people to sort. We don't actually sort all that much. I mean, certainly in other constituencies, you sort plastic from cans. Uh, other constituencies will let you recycle aluminum, for example, and there's a lot of aluminum waste here, but for Solid Waste Authority, they don't recycle aluminum. So those would be things to consider in the future without mandating exactly. That, at some point. By the county. I'm not yeah. sure about that. Maybe we, we could do it too when we negotiate a contract with a, a waste company. It's not a waste authority, does the sorting. Well, at, at, at this point, uh, I see what you're saying because the truck that comes around to handle recyclables only has two categories. Exactly. They, uh, they would have to have a truck then to take. Yep. But at some point, you may be forcing me out of my house when I can't separate all those things. It's not well, you know, who do you who do you get your service? Who's your vendor? Waste management. management. Okay, that's what Martin County has. That's who I have personally. They have sent a memo around to all the residents in Martin County, telling us that they're not going to telling us not to separate recyclables anymore in the future. And all we have to do is give them the one container. So they can save money? I don't know. No, I don't know what the reason is or if they're just going to separate it out at the plant. That's actually what it is. They have new technology oh, that have separates it. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right. So yes. They've, they're, actually mm -hmm. they're actually telling us not to uh, sort, sort them. Where, where I came from, they actually had a, um, uh, a trash burning facility that, that burned to make energy. Mm -hmm. was actually supplying yeah power to the uh, off the grid and they had a sophisticated sorting thing with magnets that pick some stuff out you know thin grates that push stuff that bounce things up right all of that stuff so i i see why they did it yeah so i don't you, you got to speak into the mic marianne i'm, I'm sorry you got to speak into the mic please <laughs> wanted to add that in Juno Beach, the condominium called the tower does not separate any longer because they told the people it ends up in the same place anyway. Now, I just know that from people who live there. Okay. Some anecdotal evidence. Well, it's like motherhood and apple pie. We can encourage efficient disposal of waste and leave it at that and then i think we're constrained by county requirements and what's what's actually going on doesn't hurt may not help i know we've got a thing on here under recyclables i just can't put my head on it Okay. Um, with all that discussion, I sort of forget the gist of what your question was, but we did amend the uh, solid waste sub element to read. Um, also continue to request the solid waste of Palm Beach County to maintain a recycling program within the town. And we deleted some other things. Actually, we deleted for reference. Uh, well, we have a request, but we actually deleted for refuse separation. So that must come up in our discussion under the infrastructure. So I don't know where that leaves us based on your, what your comment was, Jim, or what your suggestion was. It's just the idea of reduce, reuse, recycle. Should we state that that is one of our objectives as a town within conservation? Because that is a major theme internationally to do all those three things. Maybe we could reword that 
section I just read you to say that in the infrastructure. 2.1 under solid waste. Okay. <laughs> I see it. Yeah, I'm starting to lose my voice. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Objective seven. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, uh, objective four waste. <clears throat> not, not for Mars. Uh, I don't believe we have one. I got it. <laughs> Anything else on that page? We're at page 49. 50 it is. I think just looking at other things that the ecology group had suggested, they, they, they proposed that in the conservation policies here that we more or less instigate a program of public outreach to encourage people to follow conservation policies. Um, we do that already to some extent, for example, with fertilizer and pesticide use and uh, protecting the dunes. Um, would it be normal to put something in a, a section like this saying we should actively try to educate the public in supporting all of our conservation policies, or does that come into another part of our plan? So, it, so we're looking at the public information programs in yeah. part of it? Yeah. Right. They so, suggested public information programs as an objective. Right. So for example, um, policy 6.1, we looked at it. We believe that that was covered under the intergovernmental element. Okay. Um, to your point, if we want to just not necessarily state the same thing, but state something very similar, you know, but that just talks about conservation. I mean, no, that that's not a harm, but it's already addressed in the eyes element. Okay. Uh, but if you have language that you would, you know, do you want to propose? Uh, they had proposed very specific language, but if yeah, yeah I'm looking more for a general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, well, they had proposed that the objective would be to implement public information programs that promote natural resource conservation. And as I said, I think we do that to some extent in the town. Um, but if you think that's covered sufficiently under ICE. Well, well implement is a strong word. Um, public encourage. information programs that promote natural resources well, conservation. We do as a town, which we do because we have mm -hmm. flyers yeah. out there. We send out oh. our newsletters that encourage people to do certain things, but should it be stated that that is an objective of ours to educate the public about conservation issues? I think one way, I think I made a general statement in my first, my very first comments about this public information section. I think my comment to these guys was, let's, this really more appropriately belongs in the ice element. I think a lot of the things we address in other elements already, but we need to take the time to go through all of those and double check back. And I think at that time, I think we'll make, make a note of that and we'll specifically, if it's not there, we'll put it in. Excellent. And then the objective is more a policy, but I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that as a policy in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That right notes. <clears throat> Page fifty. That's where we are. Yep.
I was wondering if there's any way we can combine 8.4 and 8.8. It has a lot of the same words in them. I think actually that was a comment from one of us um, because it, meant, it, it talked about the same uh, or similar um, administrative codes. Let me see why we did not do that. 8.4 and 8.8, .8, they're very similar, but there was a reason why we left it as is. And if you can't, then put them together. Next one. That's a good point. Right. One's about development, one's about dredge and fill, but they can probably be combined. As 8.4. As 8.4. Sure. Rather than 8.8. .8. Right. Yeah, just. <clears throat> Yeah, we can look into combining them. Yeah. We could save a page. <laughs> yes. It is free. Do we have any that concludes yes, sir? comments and remarks? So normally as as we would do, we'll update um, the element with the comments provided by the board. We'll provide those under the consent agenda for the next meeting. If there's any questions, you know, you can always pull the item to answer those questions, or you can always reach out to staff prior to the meeting and we can discuss it and I can let you know, this is what we added at that. This is why I chose this language and, and whatnot. Thank you. And do you have any requests to speak? Um, I did not receive any public comments on this item. No. At that point, then, uh, comments from staff? Yes, sir. Um, we have a workshop on the northwest corner of US 1 and Donald Ross Road um, on Tuesday, June 22nd. It starts at 3 p.m. Um, and then following that, we'll have a town council meeting at 530. Thank you. Uh, also, just a reminder, the next planning and zoning board meeting is Monday, July 19th. 19th? I'm sorry, say that again. Monday, July 19th, July 19th is the next planning and zoning board meeting due to the holiday on July 5th. That was what was decided by the board. July 19th at 530. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of that either. I, I, I think we had July um, 7th. So it's, been, it's been republished as the 19th. I think we agreed on it last time. It was at the last meeting, I believe, May 3rd, to go from Monday the 19th. Why did we do that? To mess you up. Or creates a problem for me. You want to change it, Michael? Yeah, I, I would recommend going to the seventh. Wednesday, the seventh. Seventh, yeah. Len, were you available on the seventh? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I will change that date to Wednesday, July seventh. Thank you. Comments from the board. Hang on, what, what was that? The, the, the seventh. The seventh doesn't work for for me. So, uh, I mean, the nineteenth I thought was what we agreed to. But... Just change the. Well, <laughs> does that work for <laughs> you? Then? It does not. Just okay. Well, let's. I may have an issue. Can... Well, we have an alternate. So, <laughs> like, when are you away? When are you? Away? Does Monday, July twelfth, wow. work for anybody? At five thirty. Point is, I have a plane ticket already. Right, right. But when, when would you be free? So it's the seventh. Uh, other than that, I have to look to change it if I can. Oh, okay. Who's not good for the seventh? Just um, 
Hank is not good on the seventh. Does July twelfth work for anyone at five thirty? Monday, Bruce, July twelfth. Available? I have to see if I can change. We we do have an alternate in Bruce though. Uh, no. The same week as this. What about the sixth at five thirty Tuesday? Sixth. I can't do the sixth. <laughs> Eighth? The eighth? I can't do the eighth. Glenn, does the seventh work for you? <laughs> I got someone else to do it. Does seventh the seventh fine by me. Yeah. Is the, the seventh, seventh okay stick with, with you? It's fine. I'll just, I won't be yes. Here. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Would you like to appear by Zoom? Yeah. Well, no, uh, I'm out of town. I'm out of I'm place. making, I can't. But would you make somebody entertain, I'll entertain a motion to make it the seventh to go back to that. I make a motion to make the next PNZ meeting July 7th at 5.30 p.m. Second. I have, I have a second. Question. Shaking his head. I have a question. Um, Frank, could you give us an idea what's coming up that might be on the agenda for the seventh? Yes. The, the, um, Hank, I think Hank's might not be able to be here. The conservation right plan. Well, that, that'll okay. be in the consent agenda yeah. uh, unless it gets pulled. Um, staff is actually looking at possibly doing the coastal element or actually working on the intergovernmental um, element. Is there any development proposals working their way through that would be ready for uh, uh, the board? No, sir. No. Okay. No, I haven't received any applications. So uh, we have a second in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Harry, it's back to the seventh. Thank you, Hank. July 7th. Okay. Comments from the board. Just yes. Perhaps you'd like to make a comment just thanking the people who've worked so hard on this element because it has taken a lot goes of time. without saying. Well, let's say from, it. Just okay. Uh, <laughs> again, we recognize uh, town staff, uh, Jack, Frank, Kurt, for all their hard work with this ecology group. And, and the public as well. And the public as well. I already privately thank Ms. Davis, I think. Okay. Oh, I, I have a request from for Caitlin that uh, the board, PNZ board, get a, the package for Route 1 and Don Ross that's been handed out to town council. We we did not get that package. We don't have an agenda yet prepared for that workshop. Right. Are, are we talking about the workshop itself? Yes. We haven't prepared an agenda yet. Didn't the town council get some kind of package, Peggy? From the developer, I, I thought. thought. The, oh, the, the aerials. Okay. Yeah, we, we can share that. Yeah. What we received is, well, actually, we didn't receive it. Um, um, they made a presentation to town council one-on-one, -on -one, and then they provided aerials or 3D renderings of what the project is. We'll, we'll make sure to share that with um, I assume planning and so uh, the traditional development prototypes that you put in our folder has something to do with that. I'm not no. sure. These documents from Caitlin? Oh, no, that was shared by town council at the last meeting, and they wanted you to have that. That was a... That was a study that was done in the late 90s, I believe. Oh, okay. Long time ago. 99? <laughs> yes. That was something that, excuse me, um, that was something that I had found that I wanted to make sure every was, was shared with everyone on planning and zoning as well as council. So that that is, you know, something more for the maybe repurposing and, you know, US one and Donald Ross, as well as the four corners, just to see what we had. And I don't know, Frank, if where that came from, but somehow I had it in my files, but it's quite interesting to look at that. And I don't know if we shared, um, I think I did share, um, John, I shared it with you and I think we got it to the rest of planning and zoning. The other information that uh, Len Rubin had given us on the uh, North Palm Beach repurposing, as well as some of the other papers that we've had on the multimodal study. So I think you guys should be pretty much up to date once you get the conceptual plan from US One and Donald Ross that was shared with um, Town Council. Okay, further comments from the board? Then 
is all in agreement, we are adjourned.